For a few moments this morning, I want to share a thought with you from uh, this practical, this practical epistle uh, penned by James, a series entitled Hope Reimagined. If you if you're like uh, like others, if you if you're like me, we need to uh, reimagine this idea of hope. And so we're in the series entitled Hope Reimagined. And this particular installment of Hope Reimagined is entitled Let Simply Let the Lord Lead. Simply Let the Lord. Let the Lord lead. Listen, it's been uh, said already that all kinds of trials will come to us, but they are not intended to make us sink. They are intended to make us soar. Uh, that is that is the, the inspired big idea infused into James's practical yet profound words to us this morning, that trials are not designed to conquer us, Trials are designed, they are meant to be conquered. Listen, in, in case you missed it last week, to give you a, a cursory background of the text, James, the, the brother of Jesus, he pins uh, these words of, of wisdom to scattered Jewish Christians uh, who were in the flames of fiery trials because of both religious and you could even say political uh, persecution, time and time again in this letter, uh, James, however, he encourages them uh, to respond to their trials, to respond to their trouble, to respond to their tribulation, to respond to their problems uh, with progress and to their grief with growth. James just does never at any point encourage them to tuck their tail and run. He encourages them to meet their trial and their trouble and their tribulation head on. He encourages them to meet the opposition with the opportunity to grow. Uh, we pointed out last week in verse number two that James makes it very clear. He he makes it vividly and he makes it abundantly clear if that if they are going to be successful in doing that, if they are going to be successful in responding to their problems with progress and responding to their, their grief with growth, if they are going to be successful in doing that, they would first need to pause and process their troublesome experiences in light of God. They, they would be challenged and uh, they were challenged to proceed in their troubles with a new insight and an inspired vision. They were challenged in verse number two to look at their problems and their troubles through a different lens and with a different perspective. Uh, we pointed out uh, that he continued on in, in verse number two to tell them that, that they ought not be, be surprised because trials are, are sure to come uh, and act them in all, in all shapes and in all sizes and all shades and even in all seasons of life. Trouble and problems uh, do not have to be found. They have a way of finding you. They are an inevitability of life even for the child, for the child of God. And then uh, he tells them in verse number three, uh, Janair, James, he suggests that, that when trials do come, it's not a matter of if, but when. When trials do come, uh, the objective is not to give up and look for the exit. Uh, no, James suggests that the objective is to anchor down and learn as you endure. James is teaching them, and he is suggesting to them, and by extension us, uh, that enduring trials is also a method and a means of God training you and preparing you for something that you may not necessarily understand or see. And so, and so it is with that understanding that James continues to talk in verse number, verse number four. And James says there, in verse number four, when we pick up this morning, he says, and let endurance have its perfect result. Uh, he, says, he, says, he says, consider it all joy, my brothers and my sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces Patience. It produces a brave endurance. And he continues to fall in verse number four. And he says, and let that endurance have its perfect result. 
Now listen, it's, it's helpful to know that the Greek phrase there for perfect result, that, that two-word phrase there suggests a, a, a complete maturity. It, it suggests a, a full development to the intended end. It, it, it is in no way uh, to suggest perfection in the sense of sinlessness or flawlessness. It carries the idea of perfection with regard to full development, complete uh, maturity to its intended end. And the idea here is that, is that brave endurance is developing something through its own progressive uh, uh, process in your life. James is, is, is saying here that God is up to something, that, that, this, that the process of developing brain endurance is developing something uh, in your life. You, you are experiencing a process with which God is at work in your life. But what is often what is often missed in the, 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 the English translations, many of them, of this, this phrase here, this cause, is, is, is that is that uh, James is making clear through, through the Greek language uh, that God has an expectation of you. Uh, that, 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 that God's expectation of you is that you allow the process of developing endurance to exhaust itself. I'm preaching to you, and, and, and y'all don't know it. James is saying, listen, God has an expectation, and God has a requirement of you in the growth process. God expects you to allow the growth process, the process of developing endurance, to exhaust itself. Put another way, uh, James says, make sure sure that endurance has its full effect in your life. James says perseverance, listen, don't miss this. James is saying perseverance must finish its work. Don't miss it. Because what James is, is saying here, when James says that you are to make sure that endurance has its full effect, when James says let endurance have its perfect result, when James says perseverance must finish its, its course, must finish its work, James is assigning a personal level of accountability in you actively allowing endurance to run its course in your life. James is saying you have a part to play. You have a responsibility and an obligation to uphold. There is a personal level of accountability. You are to be actively involved and engaged in the process of developing endurance and particularly allowing it to run its full course. James says, James says, God will not finish his work in you without your cooperation. He, James, James is saying in very stark and very clear language that you must submit and that you must cooperate in the educational, faith-building process of your own suffering. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he, he implies that, that, that if, if you shortcut, if you sidestep, if you short circuit or sabotage the experience of developing endurance prematurely in your child, if you, if, if you try to bail out of the fire and the uncomfortable conditions and circumstances that you find yourself in prematurely, because of your own unwillingness, he's saying the process will not produce what it is intended to produce. James says through the Spirit of God that you must actively participate in your own suffering. You must, you must develop a, a submissive, a willing spirit with regard to your own suffering so that you allow what God is doing to run his full course and take his full path. Listen, in other words, God, 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 let me put it in, 
in, in the Old Cliff translation. Uh, uh, God expects you to get out of his way and let God do what he intends to do until he's done. Now, what, what, what am I, what, what am I dealing with? What, who, who are you talking to? What are you saying? I'm talking to the people that, that, that every time they experience a, a, a little discomfort, they run. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking to the person that every time you, you find yourself in, in, a, in, a, in a, a, a difficult season of life, the first thing you do, the first thing you do is bail back to, to what is comfortable. I'm talking to the I'm talking to the people that 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 frustrate and sabotage what God is trying to do to help you grow because you refuse to grow because you don't want to deal with the discomfort and the pain and the frustration that comes with growth. I'm talking to the person that asks God to grow to grow them up, and then when God introduces experiences that will cause you to grow. You, 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 you defeat God's work of your own prayers. Come on, come on. I mean, you, you know, you know, we, 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 we do all this talk about we want to be like Jesus. But what we forget is Jesus had his garden of Gethsemane experiences. But what, what we forget is that Jesus prayed, Lord, let this cup pass from me and then turn around and went to the cross. And so, and so we, 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 we pray prayers asking God to, to give us this and God give us strength, but we don't want to exercise the faith muscle through hardship and trouble and trial to develop the strength that we ask God himself to give. And so, and so that's that Jesus' words in, 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 in practical terms. God expects you to get out of his way and let God do what he intends to do in you until God is done doing what he's doing in you. He is telling you to stop stifling and sabotaging the work of the Holy Spirit. Get and keep self out of the way because you are frustrating God's process. To develop and inspire growth. You know, listen, if that ain't a word for you, that's a show enough of a word for me. There have been times when I got in my, my own way and I even continue to get in my own way because I don't want to experience the pain that is required, the discomfort that is required to, uh, of the Lord to get me where he's trying to take me. And so, so James says, listen, listen, he says, Count it all joy. He says, let endurance have its, 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 its perfect result. But then he keeps writing and, and, he, and he says something else. And then the, in the second call for that same verse, verse number four, James tells us that with our cooperation in our trials, he says the work God is doing and the progress that he is infused, that, that, that through the work that he's doing, rather, and through the, 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 the progress of, of, of our trial, God is, God is infusing a quality and a depth of character into our eternal existence. Listen, in case I don't say, say that right, if you're trying to understand what God is doing, that is precisely what the Lord, what the Lord is doing in you right now. I'm talking to somebody who's trying to figure out what in the world the Lord is up to. What in the world is the, is the Lord doing? Where is he going? Where is he taking me? I suggest to you that, that through the process, the Lord is creating progress and he is infusing a quality he is infusing a depth of character into your eternal existence. He is developing within you a quality that you will need throughout eternity. James says it like this in verse number four. He says, so that you may be perfect. He says, let endurance have have its perfect result. Why? So that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. 
put another way, James, James says, let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now what's helpful to know is that the term you have completed, it refers to something that has all of its parts and is therefore whole. The phrase lacking nothing, it depicts something that that possesses all of its 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 necessary parts. They go they go together. And, and the idea here is that taking together in their context, yeah. these terms say that they, they, they are they are a description of a of a person of integrity. A person of, of quality with no weak points. It's describing a person who is equipped with everything needed to successfully live out their life in all areas of the Christian life, not lacking in anything of spiritual importance or spiritual value. That's what that's what we're seeing at a person who is who is who is complete. A person that is not two-dimensional, but a person that's three-dimensional. Uh, uh, he, he's describing the whole the whole person. But watch this. This, this is the point. I'm, uh, I, I want to spend just a few moments on before we before we we land this thing. What what we often misunderstand. What is often misunderstood about verse number four is that James tells them and he's telling us that the attainment or the, the, the state of, of, of having endurance is not just something that you build toward. It's something that you build upon. What James is about to explain to us is why he is emphasizing, why he is leading with the need to develop a level, a competent, faithful level of endurance. Uh, James, James is, is helping us understand that, that, that endurance is not just, uh, developing endurance is not just about developing endurance. It is not just something you build toward, it is something that you build on. James is saying endurance is both an accomplishment and it is at the same time accomplishing something bigger. James is saying that faithful endurance is the intended result of your trial. But it is not the final result of your trials. James is saying faithful endurance is where you want to get in order to get where you're ultimately going. James is saying your development, your, your growth in the area of endurance will in turn impact and facilitate your development your maturity, and your growth in every area of your life and your character. James is just helping us understand that there are some essential areas of your Christian existence. There are some elements of, of, of the Christian experience that you can only enjoy after you possess endurance. James is saying there's some stuff that you will not experience until you develop a level of endurance. endurance. What are you talking about, preacher? Why? Why, 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 why is he saying that? Well, number one, just to get practical here, let's get practical here. I want to suggest to you, I want to suggest to you that, that James is, is saying here you won't experience all of, of life that is offered in Christ without endurance, number one, because you'll quit 
before God can complete his work in you. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking to some Christians that ain't worth a quarter. Come on, somebody. I might as well don't talk back to me. Because they will not allow themselves to go through any experience that forces them to grow. Come on, somebody. We talking, we talk, uh, we, we were talking about, I don't know, none, none, of them, none of them go here, but we're talking about the members at church house. Because every time there's a problem, instead of growing, they get to go and come. I'm, 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 talk, I'm talking to somebody uh, uh, that every time you have a trouble, some, some trouble in your marriage, yeah. hmm? Yeah. Hmm? It's, 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 it's time to go on ChristiansMeet.com for the moment. Okay, all right, y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Huh? Huh? I'm talking, every time it gets a little tough, you're reaching for a bottle. Hmm? Come on, somebody. You, 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 uh, 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 not worth a quarter because we will not allow ourselves to, to experience seasons that force us to grow. And so, and so, and so the Lord says, listen, listen, there, there's some stuff in your life. You, you'll never really, for the most part, develop a real sense of joy without endurance. Yeah, yeah. You'll, 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 you'll never be a good, uh, a decent husband without endurance. You'll never be a, a wife worth having without some endurance. You'll never be a, 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 a quality, a productive Christian without in, 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 in endurance. You'll, you'll, you'll never be able to help folk that are hard to help without endurance. You'll never share the gospel if you don't have a level of endurance. James is trying to help us understand that endurance is essential for all of the other qualities that God is trying to develop within us to make us whole. So he says, you, he says, you, you gotta endure to the end because if you don't, you'll quit before God can complete his other work in you. Yeah, uh, 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 he, he says number two, I want to suggest to you number two rather. James says that you, you gotta, you gotta endure, he, he suggests that that, that you have to, to, to let it, it take its uh, endurance, the process of endurance, uh, take its full, its full course because, because nothing reveals the unhealthy, toxic attitudes and patterns of your life, your thinking, your behavior, your relationships, your stewardship, your parenting, your leading, and your following like hard times. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. You, you, you know that nothing brings out the real you and the cracks in you like hard times. And so, and so all of, of the growth you can hope to enjoy, all of the the progress you hope to produce, all of the blessings you hope to, to benefit from are the, are the outgrowth James is helping us understand. It is an outgrowth of a personal and fully developed level of endurance in your character. James is saying if you don't develop endurance, you're not going to develop much else. If you don't, if you don't develop a level of brave faith, you're not going to be successful in the other areas of your life because the, uh, the growth in the other areas of your life will all require a sense of brave endurance. And so he says. He says, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm putting you through this and I want you to stay in this because I am producing 
a quality within you that will help you to become the person of destiny that I'm creating you to be. And so, so we can we can have hope reimagined in darkness and in trouble because we know that courage in our trials is producing perseverance. And perseverance is producing maturity. And maturity is producing the complete work of the highest quality of life that you can experience. And we don't have time to deal with this, but at the end of the day, the, the highest quality of life that God has for you is not cars, rings, and chains in gated communities. It is a life of, of, of trustful obedience to the leading and the call of the Lord. Listen, I'm not sure if, that, if anything that I said really made a whole lot of sense this morning. But I tried to explain this in a way that was, that took a, a, a profound truth and made it, made it, made it simple. James is, James is just saying the Lord wants you to stay put and not seek the shortcut because he is producing in some producing something in you today that shapes a bigger picture of the wider tapestry. It's like it's like um, you know when I was kind of kind of meditating on on this idea of what James is saying here, it made me think about it made me think about our cell phones. You know, I, I read somewhere that there are more cell phones in the world today than there are people. Let that sink in for a minute. There are more cell phones in the world today than there are people in the world today. Uh, I also found it very interesting that 7% uh, of the demand for gold in the world is because of cell phones. I don't know if you know this, some of you, some of you may, some of you may not know that your cell phone has gold in it. Uh, your cell phone, it has, uh, whether it's a flip phone, amen, or, 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 the, or that, 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 that eye thing they got, or one of these beautiful Samsung Galaxy gifts of God. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> got some got some gold in it, refined gold in it, right? But this is what I'm. This is what I'm. I'm and the reason that's the reason that's so is because the because gold is a is a tremendous conductor. And what they discovered is that gold works very well to transmit data and electricity. From one place to the next in your in your in your phone. Gold is used to make the phone operate at optimum capacity. Yeah. But my point is, is that as important and as essential as the refining process is for the gold, the refined state, the refined condition of the gold is not the ultimate purpose of the gold being refined. The gold is not being refined just so that it, just so that it can be pure gold. The pure gold is being refined for the purpose of being used to make the cell phone operate and function the way the creator intended for it to function. The gold's ultimate purpose is not realized until after, the, let me put it this way, the, 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 the ultimate purpose of the gold is not realized after it is purified. The ultimate purpose of the, of the gold being it is when it is purified and is used in a capacity that makes the phone function. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
And so what I'm saying is here that in the same sense, the endurance that is but the, 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 the endurance that refining trials in your life produce is not the end goal. The end goal is not to be refined. The end, the end goal is for the endurance to be incorporated into every aspect of your life. Just like this, this phone ain't gonna function quite right, quite the same without that gold in there. Your life will not function quite the same without possessing a level and the quality of endurance. God is not taking you through the refining process undone. The refining process of your trials just so that you can have endurance. It's so that the endurance can facilitate the flow of growth in the other parts of your life. So I'm encouraging you, wherever you are, to hang in there. Don't quit. And don't jump ship. Because your life literally may depend on how well you navigate, handle, and shoulder the very troubles and burdens that you're dealing with right now. This may very well be God's way of preparing you for what's next. And God says, if you short circuit the process, if you give up now, if you quit, if you jump ship, sacrifice and forfeit the highest quality of life that I'm trying to get you to. But the first thing you got to do is learn how to handle trouble. Because I got news for you. It's like, it's like the Lord is saying, I got news for you. When you get over this circle, guess what? going to be another one. Can't wait for 2021 to get here. Guess what? 2021 got his own set of troubles. Now watch this. December 31st, 2021. Praise the Lord. Now through another year, but guess what? 2022. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. His own set of troubles. You, you, you experienced one victory in your life. Guess what? Some more trouble gonna come. You climb one mountain, guess what? On the other side of that mountain, there's another valley. Uh, but you gotta figure out, you, you gotta have the fortitude to go over the mountains and through the valleys if you wanna get to the promised land. That level of maturity that God wants you to have. So we invite you, we invite you to, to reimagine hope. And as you reimagine hope, simply let, let the Lord lead. Let, let the hardship of the trouble of the stuff you're going through run its full course. And stay out of God's way, let God do what he's doing. Do it with a joyful attitude and a joyful spirit. Recognizing that God is completing his work, his work in you. There's somebody here perhaps who's watching needs to understand, listen, that the blessings and burdens are only benefits of those who are in Jesus. Uh, uh, and, and, and listen, uh, I want to suggest to you that if you're going you're gonna to go through your trials and go through your trouble, you might as well get something out of it. You might as well get some, some glory out of it. You might as well get credit for it. You might as well grow through it. And the only way you do that is when you go through your trials and troubles with the Lord and through the lenses of faith that only come to those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's somebody who's not in relationship. You are not in covenant relationship with him. You want you to know that you, you, you enter a covenant relationship with him through, back, through, through faith, obedient faith that includes Surrender, submission that includes a, a 
belief that Jesus Christ lived, suffering, and died for you, that he got up for you. A surrender in your spirit to the will and the way of Almighty God in your life. An acknowledgement that Jesus is who he is, the Son of God. And a submersion, a burial in water for the forgiveness of all your past sins. The faithfully had no be at home. But in the meantime, in between time, the Lord will do his work in you. You work with him, he'll work with you. Don't quit on him because he's not going to quit on you. And when it's yours to call, his to call and ours to answer, we'll see him. We'll see him in glory. That's where we'll experience the, the conclusion of all of this. All of this is preparing us for the day we see God in glory. That ought to be your desire. That ought to be your. That ought to be your hope. Let us hope reimagine that all this that we go through, because we're going to one day see God in glory. I don't know about you, but I want to see the Lord say, "Well done." I want to hear Him say, "It's not going. It wasn't easy. It was hard. I know you felt like quitting, and you almost did. But you hung in there. You stayed with me. I stayed with you. Come on in. Your reward, the reward awaits you." But that only comes to those who refuse to quit. Mm -hmm. Those who allow the Lord to do what He's doing, what He desires to do in your life. That's our prayer for you this week. That you'll be more determined this week to follow the Lord's lead in a way you haven't in times past. To stay out of God's way and stick with it, even when you feel like giving up and giving in. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for this time in your word today. Pray that everyone under the sound of the vessel's voice, Father, has been challenged, Father, that has been agitated, is now more determined to let you have your way, to follow, to follow your lead, Father, to stick with you because you, you've already said in your word that you are going to, you're going to stick with us. Help us, Father, to see our trouble and our trial through fresh eyes, through fresh perspective inspired insight. Recognizing that the trouble and the, the, the hardship, the, the, the ugly, painful stuff that we're going through now is producing something. It's producing within us a quality and a character that will help us to be more like you. Father, for those who are struggling, we pray that you will encourage them in their spirits to not give up or give in. Father, those who are dealing with uh, hardship and trouble on every side, Father, we ask that you help them to feel a special, special uh, presence, Father, to know that you are there, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, Father. For those who may not know you, Father, we pray that they will make a decision to intimately know you, to surrender their life to you through obedience, even today. Those who need prayer, Father, we solicit prayers. For those who need to be encouraged, those who are dealing with grief because of sickness and loss of various kinds, Father, pray your blessings. Bless us, Father, with a productive and a safe week. Bring us back to this occasion to worship you and to hug on you and to love on you and adore you some more next week. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we offer this prayer.